Hello everybody, it's Katie. So I want to make, remember these canes that I made a long time ago, these cell canes I called it? I'm going to make another black one because I used it all up and I want to use that. I think that might look really cool on or with our white translucent canes. So I want to make another one of those. And this is pretty simple. I actually didn't, I still have some of these other colors, but that one I used it all up very quickly. I love the way it looks. So with this case, I'm not going to use my fanciest translucent, which is my Cernet. I'm going to use basic, I'm going to use up some of my basic um, Primo translucent. And I think this is regular because it won't really matter um, because we're going to tint it. And I have it chopped up in little pieces here because it was super, super crum crumbly. And I have a video showing you guys why I did that. And I added clay conditioner to it to get it to be a lot softer because before I couldn't even condition it. It's been sitting in this bag for like a year because I have a couple different bags. But I did them all together. Like I have white translucent. I have bags of regular translucent. Some of the Primo translucents are so crumbly. And I ordered them in the summertime, which... I think they sat in my mailbox during the day and got too hot. So I hate ordering clay in the summer. If you think about it in like the spring or the fall, get yourself some clay ordered. So pretty much I'm going to get this conditioned and rolled out. And then we're going to, uh, let me just get it to come together. And then get out some alcohol inks. I made this last time with alcohol inks in multiple different colors. Um, so that's how I would do it again this time. And I don't quite remember what I did with how I made the black one. I assume I used black alcohol ink, but I did not put that color mix in the tutorial. Um, so we're going to wing it again and we're going to make the black. So I'm going to get this kind of rolled out into some sheets. And I might actually make more of it because I really like this one. I like the black and I find I used it a lot actually until I ran out of it. But I don't want to make too much because I don't like when my canes get really, really old. Okay, so let me get this to come together. And I'll get my black um, alcohol ink out and I will be back. Okay, so I'm just putting a pair of gloves on. I got that to come together. And I believe in my other ones that I did, I did four different tone variations. So I'm going to do the same thing. But I do want more of the dark because I might just keep like make a veneer out of the dark um, and I'm going to be using the pinata the black they have this bottle's almost gone so I have another bottle and this really just takes adding until you're happy and you think you have multiple variations you don't need to use four um, shades of it but I'm going to and just kind of keep adding until it's good and so I'll just add the black spread it out, wait until it dries, and then mix it in until I'm happy with how much colorant I have in. So I'm going to let this dry. And you can do this. I did this with green. I did it with purple. I also, in, in that video, I used um, the Pardo translucent in that video. Um, and made a cane completely out of colored translucent clays. But I find, for me, it's more cost effective just to buy translucent and then tint it if I want tinted translucents, just tint it with alcohol ink. Because then I can just buy a big thing of translucent and make it whatever color I want. But, um, where's my... But the ones I did the first time with the... This one is made out of the Pardo, and some has more of the blue Pardo, and some has more added, I added translucent to it. But these are all alcohol inks, all of these ones. So you can have fun with this. Um, but I think I'm going to keep one as a solid black, and then I'm going to make a black one of the circles as well. I don't know if I still have that pendant that I made from that. Remember I did the pumpkins and I don't know, you can go back and look through that video. I don't know what video it is. I'd have to look. But once this starts to dry, we're going to mix this in and it's almost dry. So just mix it in by hand at first. Don't stick it through your machine at first. Um, 
because you don't want to get black ink all over your machine. So until it's kind of mixed in, you don't want to stick it into your machine. So just keep kind of mixing it together until it comes together. And again, this one I think I did one drop, two drop, three drops, four drops. So, you know, just try to get darker to lighter. And I will do a test bake on this as well. That's what I did the first time to make sure that color was where I wanted it before I did my whole batch. Because it's hard to tell until it's baked, which we'll see. So I'm going to mix these up. Once I get it so it's not like leaving ink marks on my tile, I'll run it through the pasta machine, which it's not really. So what I'll do is I'll run it through my pasta machine and I'll keep running it through until I have a nice even mix. And I'll do that with all of these. So I tend to fold in thirds when I'm mixing a color. I fold the ends in. Um, and then I put it in from the rollers. I put the fold, you know, on either side and I put it in like this so we can squish the air out through the tops. And ultimately you're ending up folding the ends in every time. And that way you condition the ends as well and it's not just the middle clay getting conditioned. just like this. So I'm going to keep doing this until all the colors are mixed. And then I'll come back with you and see if I need to add any more alcohol ink to darken anything else up. Okay? So here's the first. And other than my dark, these three, I mean, I can see it in real life it does. These two are about the same. So I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to put one dot on this one, two on that one, maybe four on this one, because I want the dark to be dark. And I'm just going to keep doing that, like I said, until I get a color. You know, I want the dark to be dark. I don't want to add any black clay to it, because I don't really want it to be opaque. You know, I want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be opaque. As far as my lightest shade goes, I will take a little bit of white. And I am talking a smidgen of white and add it to that because I don't want to make this opaque, but I do want to lighten it up just a teensy, teensy, teensy bit like that. Maybe just the tiniest little flicks of white I'll add in here. Okay, so I'll keep mixing these up. So this is going to be my lightest shade. It's got that tiny little bit of white and then I'll keep adding black until I'm happy with the variations there. So my darkest I'm happy with, my medium, and I actually now thinking back, I think I did white in this and this one. So I'm going to add a tiny bit more in this one. And this is actually not pure white. This is my white translucent scraps that we've been using in the last couple videos. Remember, I already added a couple little dots in this. And maybe just three total tiny little smidgens in these two. So this one I already had mixed in a couple of dots of white. So I'm going to mix these in and then what I'll do to see if I'm happy with it is do a test bake um, or a test batch. Uh, exactly like we're going to do the big batch but just in a small, smaller version. So I think I got my colors but you can't really tell until you bake them. So I'm going to do a dinky little test batch with each one, just a tiny little bit of each. And then I'll know if I need to modify at all. So um, this is going to be the same exact way we're going to do the big one. So I'm going to skip ahead, but I just wanted to tell you, you know, it's good to do a test batch. And I'll show you how this, how it comes out after I bake it. You know, just a quick bake, like a, you know, 15 minute, just to get it to go translucent to see what it's going to look like. So I did my little dinky test bakes, and I mean, I literally did a little dinky one. And it's hard, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I can see it. So, 
I want my white on the outside to be a little more bolder. In real life I can see it, but I did it so small. And I didn't make it that smooth. Either way. So I'm going to add a little more white to this one. Because I want it to be a little more bolder than that one. I have a kind of a thick layer of that one gray tone. And I want a little bit more of a difference. See, it just looks like a gray outside of a, with a black. I know, I should have made it a little bigger. Sorry, and it's not the thinnest. But either way, I know what I need to do. So I'm going to add a little bit more white into that. Maybe too much into that. And I'll mix this in. And then we're going to do a Skinner blend between all of these. So let me mix this up quick. So I pretty much just did a something like that and baked it. But gave me enough information for me. So let me mix this up. Okay, so that's my two lightest. So all we're going to do now is make a Skinner blend between these colors. And I'm just kind of trying to push all the air out. And I'm going to do a teardrop blend like I usually do. Um, but you can blend it however you want just by making it into a circle. And then angling your hands like you're doing the chopping motion. Make a teardrop. And we're going to blend these lightest to darkest. And I could do another test bake to see if I like it, but I think it's good enough. Until I'm happy. I hope that will be enough of a difference right there. And we're going to put lights or thin end to thick end. And again, I've already done this in a video. I think it's got the picture of the blue one and the, the green one. And the, uh, we call it a thumbnail photo, but of the photo of the tutorial. But I want to see what this looks like with our translucent canes, our translucent white flowers. We made one recently, and then we made one a long time ago, and I want to see how it looks. And I might use one of the old one of these in a color to use as the backing that will show through a little bit. Just to use up some of my old canes. Because a lot of them are getting to about a year now and they kind of get not so great after a year. They get harder and harder to work with. Okay, and then I'll just roll them out by hand gently just to get them going because they're too big to fit my pasta machine right now. Don't you bark. Here, my dog doing a little woof, little air bubble there. Diesel. Okay, so I'm going to run it through on setting zero just to get it all evened out a little bit. Okay, and what I always say is keep your colors vertically away from you, not horizontal, right? Vertical, and then fold up. Now this end got really thick compared to that end, so I'm going to just scooch it in a little bit. Just like this, and then we'll keep blending it. Fold goes in first, and that way all four of our tones are touching the rollers first and all the air gets pushed out the top through the fold. 
and I literally I just put this through like four or five times it does not need to be a perfect blend because we had four very similar tones already I don't think I mean it's up to you how much you want to blend it so then we're just going to make it into a long thin strip so I tend to do this by cutting it I do not like to uh, fold this over because I feel like I get more air bubbles trapped especially in the summer when it's really hot so I tend to cut and fold but or cut and roll it over but some people prefer to fold it I just get too many air bubbles so I like to slice it and lay it but do it however you like to usually I don't pick it up so I don't move it but and then this last little part I will fold it over and we're going to thin it out some because our pasta machine won't want to take that big thick strip so I'm going to kind of pull it out with my hands to thin it out you could run it with your roller too but this is really stiff clay so I'm going to start to I'm just going to keep warming it with my hands and then we're going to run it through a machine on down to the thinnest setting you can get it. And again, that depends on one, how sticky your clay is, two, what time of year, uh, what time of year it is, if it's winter versus summer. Um, so however thin you want to get it, and we're going to roll this, make a jelly roll, or a, a blended roll, I should say. A jelly roll would be if we actually backed it with another color. A blended roll is just blending one blend into a roll. Come on roller. Okay, so I'm going to start on setting zero and work down to my thinnest setting I feel comfortable going with before it starts to get too sticky. Okay. And I know you can't quite see dark to light, but I can. I know this is a hard a hard one to see but it definitely is going from dark to light so I only took it down to a four today um, the thinner you go the smoother of a blend you'll get in your roll but I don't really want to go much more than this it's pretty humid here today so not that the clay itself is sticky it is a different texture when you add alcohol ink to it and I'm gonna begin rolling from the dark side to the light side. I want the light on the outside, dark in the middle, but that's again a decision you'll have to make if you want to make one of these. Oh, see it's sticking to my table. It's just different textured. See it's stuck to my table right there. Actually, you know what? I had my warm tile right there, didn't I? So now we have a blended roll. I have a little white on my hands. And then we're just going to reduce this down into multiple sizes. That's a little sanding dust. So we'll go down, you know, any kind of sizes you want. My initial in inspiration for this a long time ago was um, the cells that are created when people just do the uh, pore paintings, the acrylic pores. That was my original kind of inspiration for this. Now because this is a blended roll, reducing isn't that kind of critical of a thing. And we're looking for variations. So you can use your ends even though they're going to be distorted, you can use them. So, you know, I'm just kind of quickly reducing it down with my fingers. I'm going to use these distorted ends and everything. And because there's not a beautiful pattern on the inside, you can do more rolling. And I've been playing with this, so it's easy to push and pull and stretch out pretty easily, pretty quickly. And then we'll start, I don't know how big I want each cell though. I'm going to start with my largest size and then 
cut a hunk off and then work my way down. I might just cut a little bit of this end off. You see that? So I'm going to cut. Oh, hang on. My phone's going to die. I got to plug it in. So I'm going to cut a hunk of this off. This will be my largest size. And then we'll keep reducing it down till we get smaller and smaller sizes. And that way we have different size circles all in there. And if you mix these scraps up, you just get like a translucent gray, which would look cool with a different color clay underneath it. I'll go get one of those pendants just in case you guys have never seen what this is going to look like. I'll go grab one of my old pendants when I go upstairs. Let's start putting those together and then I can decide what size I need. So we're going to cut these into lengths, um, however long you want to make this. I'd probably do closer to one inch is usually where I go. Just cut one roughly a length and then cut the rest to that size. And then we're just going to randomly, just like a bubble cane, some people do it bubble canes. Um, some people said the blue one looked like some kind of faux stone, the blue one I did in the other video. And don't worry about these little pieces because you can take this little piece and reduce this down into the same length. So, you know, use all your pieces. Just make it a smaller diameter. And we can use that one. I'm just going to do a few of each and I might actually roll one more snake out that's even skinnier than this one and then I can just kind of show you what I'm doing here and then you guys can do the rest on your own so let me even get one skinnier than that last one because these are good filler ones the really skinny ones blade is so old, I can't even see the edge anymore. I've sharpened it. This is the first blade I ever got, so it's probably close to two years old now. And is this the other size I need? Yep. Let me cut a few here. Just enough to show you what I'm doing and then you guys can, if you decide to make this, but make it in different colors. This is fun. This is a good veneer clay for layering stuff on top of. Okay, so then you're just going to take your different sizes and literally set them all together. Nothing fancy about this. See, the littler ones are good filler ones. You could make these square, you can make them round, you can make them, you know, 
let them just go, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let them kind of do their thing and go however they change shape is what I want them to do. When I squish it all and reduce it all together, I just kind of want it to do its own thing and take its own shape. But I, I'm probably going to either reduce this as a square or a circle. But it's easier to, when you're laying a veneer, to lay squares. I'm going to cut some more shapes, but that's all we're doing is just sticking them together, okay? So we got it all put together. I'm just going to kind of sm smoosh the ends. And then we're going to reduce this. Now, again, you can reduce this as a circle or a square or whatever you want to reduce it as. I might actually do it square because it's just easier to um, put that shape veneer together. So I'm going to get out an acrylic block. I really need to clean my desk. It's a mess. And to start off with, I'll just use this to kind of get it into that shape. And again, these are going to kind of free form, which is good. I kind of want them to get all goofy in there. And however big you or small you want to make this, you could Make it nice and small, cut it, stack it, you know, put it together and stack it to make your mo more bubbles, I guess, or cells. I don't know why I haven't taken my other glove off yet. So like I said, I really want to use my translucent flowers on top of this. Now, I was thinking one side I might do this. One side I might just take those scraps so I'm going to let this rest. I'm not going to cut it now. I'm just going to let it rest. I think I might take these scraps. All right, just all of these scraps. I think this I might lay on the side with my flowers. This through. And I don't care if it's completely mixed right now, that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, it can be completely mixed, but. take this down to the setting I think I'll probably cut these slices at because I might do a double sided pendant. It's probably like a, let's try it for that. Mm, I usually can cut a little thinner. I'm not going to use my clay slicer but maybe a five. Yeah, I can cut around that. And I know it's rippled. That's fine. I'm not worried about the rippling. Now, that may or may not be completely mixed. I don't know. Let me grab a couple of my old ones of these because I'm going to use that as the under color because this is translucent, guys. So remember, it's going to, whatever we put under it is going to show through. And I don't want to put an opaque color under it because I really liked, I'll go grab that. Ooh. I'll go grab that cane in a minute to show you. Okay, hang on. Let me get these out. 
So for those of you who follow me, this is the one we did. And then there was another one with a pumpkin. But I don't know if you can see this, but I have like a green and a purple tone underneath it. And it is still translucent. And I want to keep it that way. So I'm going to use, and this was used from Scrap Cane. So in my box here, and I actually did have a black one left. I did have a black one left. So I might use that and let this one rest. But either way, I have some old of the red. That's it that I have of the red. I have a little bit of the green. I have some of the yellow. <clears throat> I have a purple. I don't know, that color and then that color. And then I also pulled out some of my translucent canes. Um, the last two we made. So this one we made a, a little while back now. And I know it's going to be hard to see. Let me see if I can find it in my book. I usually uh, print pictures so that way you guys can, or print pictures. Um, this one here. Cut the end slice and that's, I bake it so you guys can see it. So that's that one and then this one that we made. So we're going to use these two. And, but I think on the side we lay the flowers on, I'm going to have nowhere to stick anything right now. I'm running out of room. I am going to put the flowers on the solid. I'm going to use the cane that we made on the other half. And then I'm as a base for both sides, I'm going to use some of these colors. Because this is getting old. This is getting really old. And I might as well use them up. I can always make more. That will be nice and soft. Because I'm even afraid with this one, as I slice it, it might crack because it's so, it's getting so old. I bet that video's eight or nine months old now. So anyways, uh, let me move some stuff. Hang on. Okay, so let's maybe... Let's just break some of this down. I'm not going to leave it bubbled. I mean, I could use this underneath. I'm just going to use it as a base clay because it's still mainly translucent clay. And I want the pendant to stay fairly translucent to let the light through. So these were really cool canes. I really like these. I just don't use them often. The black one I used a lot of, but... This is all I have of the red. I used the red recently on something. So let's, um, pretty much I just want to make like a veneer to stick everything onto. Save that for the green. Let's put some more purple with this one. Guys, it really doesn't. I'm just literally throwing it together. I have no rhyme or reason for doing what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to give myself a swirled base to lay all the clay on. And that way you'll get some kind of hint of purple from underneath or red, depending. I already have a purple cut, so let's use that. No rhyme or reason. Because literally on this other one, and the one I wear is even, it shows up better. Um, this was just the scraps that I just laid it on. So that's all I'm going to do is just use this clay up. I was going to sell some of my canes because I have stacks and stacks of these containers with a whole bunch of canes inside. And I have like, you know, little bits of cane here and there, like little bits of flowers and, and things, but I don't have mass amounts of it, you know, like little, and I was going to maybe sell them on Etsy for, or not on Etsy, because I don't really want to make an account, maybe like uh, the odds and ends that I still have of flowers, you know, this is like two inches, 
but they're getting old and I, I don't want to waste them. I could cut them up and scrap them and use them for different colors, but a lot of people don't make their own canes. They buy them. So I'm like, maybe we could do like an Amazon gift card and I'll send you canes, you know, type thing. Like five bucks, four bucks, three bucks, depending how much, because I don't want to trash them. But I could always, I won't trash them. I would mix them back up and get see what color I get. Okay, so I'm going to run this through my machine. And I'm probably going to, do I want to marble it maybe? Maybe I'll just marble it up. See how old this clay is? You got to get it to work and come together. Okay, let me run that through the machine again. I just want to get some variations of color, and I kind of like that red. But I also have to get, get it conditioned well enough so it might end up making a solid color. Okay, that's probably conditioned well enough. I just need to make sure I can fit a pendant cutter on that because this is going to be the back for both sides. I have no clue. I should just close my eyes and grab a shape is what I should do. I'm like always like, what size of cutter have I not used recently? Maybe this one I didn't use this one, I don't think. This oval. Oh yeah, I did. Damn it, why is that the hardest part? Is picking out your cutter shape. You know, I haven't used this one in a while. Let's use that basic metal cookie cutter. Yeah. Okay. So this will be our base here. And that way everything from the black will show through on this. Okay. Now on the black side we're going to lay down actually put this here put this here this is what we're going to lay our flowers on and it's pretty thin right now, but I'm just going to score it just so, so I can see. And I'm not going to use my Lucy Clay Slicer. I mean, I totally could, but this is going to be less of a precise thing. So I'm just going to get a new blade out. And literally on our translucent flowers, just slice in place. So obviously try to get them as thin as you can. You know, but I'm not perfect at Maybe I do want to use my clay slicer for the flowers. Let me use that. Let me cut some slices. I think I have enough black to make two of these, but just in case I don't, I really wanted a green base instead of that purple. So I'm going to do my first one with this green and this yellow. Maybe actually if I keep the two colors next to each other, it'll be easier when I condition it. If I do three yellows. Some of these are getting really, really old. Yeah, 
and I just want to use it up so I might as well use it as a color so I'm gonna mix this one up just like we did that purple and red one um, and I want to use this first because I just do because I prefer the green over the purple but let me mix this up in my machine So now I have this, and maybe to get it a little bit more mixed up, I might do something like this. Oh wait, it's not just a strip of yellow down the middle, because when the yellow and green mix, they're getting a pretty um, lime green. And then I'll run that through one more time. Nothing really scientific. I'm literally just playing. Cool. That will be the base of one. Yep. Okay. So there's another base. Okay. And now I have enough of the cane slices I believe cut and I just did one full turn on my Lucy clay slicer so all we'll do is just lay these guys on and I kind of as you saw just quickly marked out with my cutter roughly I want to get both of these flowers on here. This one isn't an exact thing, you know, I'm not being overly precise with this. It's just not what I'm going for, you know. I don't like to be too critical on myself. I just with clay for some reason I just that's my wind down time that's why I have a full-time job this is not my full-time job I'm not gonna sit here and edit videos I know people want me to edit my talking out or edit this out or edit that out I'm not gonna sit here for hours to edit you know it already takes me about an hour to edit and then three or four hours to upload like sorry this is not my full thing and I don't want to make it a full-time job you know not everybody will love my videos and that's fine not everybody will and I'm okay with that you you know you're not paying for them so all you need to do is just not watch just or fast forward or speed it up or just yeah not watch you don't need to I'm not forcing you to watch my videos by any means if you guys if people don't like them I hate when people come. I'm like, it's freaking free. Like, why are you complaining? Just, if you don't like it, don't watch it. <laughs> Just fast forward. So now I'm going to push straight down. And I worry because this base is quite thin. That black, I had it quite thin. So I should have put it on parchment before I've done this. Let me see if I can pick it up right now use my old blade because that black is sticky 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 okay let me get it on the parchment so that way I don't risk sticking and now we're just gonna smooth it out just use your fingers to feel And we'll be burnishing more in a minute once we put the two halves together because this is only going to be one half of the pendant and then the circle cane will be the other half. I wanted to try to find something to put these translucents on where they actually like popped, you know. Oh, I might have to put it 
put another one or two on here. There's one that got a little messed up. And there's another one. Maybe one of these. Kind of want to make put that one right on top of that one. But. And I know on camera it doesn't look like I get black fuzzies in my translucent and white clay. I do. You get dust and fuzzies in your clay every single time. But the black is going to be showing up. So hopefully showing through all this translucent. Okay. So then this part should be good. So we can cut a piece out of this. to go this way, huh? Keep this, because I might try to make a second one out of this if I can. These scraps I'll probably try to swirl up into a lentil and see what I get. That's why I made the green back because I wasn't sure if I would have enough of this. But I should if I cut my ends off of here. Okay, so here's half of our piece. I'm going to leave it right there. The other half... I might let this one rest and try to use this old one. Maybe I can get it moving a little bit. I don't know how this would slice though. Now the other thing is you want both of your pieces to be even. So I need to make slices about this thick. So I'll probably slice it by hand. Let's see how this old one slices. If not, I'll use the new one. it's going to crackle too much. See our new one that we just made? Oh, it's so sticky. So these we're just going to lay down. If I was smart, oh. so originally, well, I'm not sure, I'd have to rewind to see what thickness I put this black on that I just laid these slices on, but I think it was a three. Oh no, a five, wasn't it? So if I actually roll something out to put these on, say a five, then I can lay, cut it with my clay slicer and actually lay it on that. So, let me take some of this green and yellow. I'm going to take some more. Finish off this green and yellow here. It's just easier if you can lay your slices on something. I'm thinking as I go, guys. I'm going to do the same thing I just did with this. Okay, so I put this green on a 5, which should be the same as this 
the black was, and then I did one full turn of my clay slicer for these cane slices. So that's what I then did for those slices. And that way, both layers of clay should be about the same thickness when we put them both on our backing. So, so this is one full turn on your Lucy clay slicer on the large one. So I'm going to lay these down, trying not to overlap them. Actually, I should see where to score this first. So I know where to put my slices. Will two fit this way? Do I want to go lengthwise? It's hard because it's so sticky in the summer that kind of just when you lay it down, it is going where it's going. And the only hard part is these ends I didn't cut square. It would have been easier if I would have flattened these ends off and cut them square. It does make it easier to match them up. But luckily this is not a cane. Sorry, my fiance just started mowing outside. That will matter too much if it's not perfectly matched up. So you can just really stretch it around and get it to go where you want it to go. As long as it's all covering your base. Yes, again, I would have been smarter if I would have cut these all to a very square end, but I did not. I have to have surgery this week to get that lump out. Finally. It grew, so it's been about two years I've had this lump, right, that I talked about a while back. And they did the ultrasound and stuff of it six months ago, and it's, they just checked it again. It's been six months. It grew over 30% um, in six months, which is their benchmark for removal. But either way, I was, like, done with it. I want it gone. Cancerous or not cancerous, I want it gone. Where is the... Am I already up to the top of my cutter? Yep, I'm already up to the top. So then I'm, what I'm going to do with bad slices is fill in any of these little holes right here. I'm going to fill in the middle one and a little bit right here. Okay, and then we'll burnish this guy down. And we're going to do more burnishing in a minute, but for now. And I might let this rest, these two clays rest before I stick them together. Before I cut them and stick them together. But at least for now, I'm going to just get my seam smoothed off a little bit. Again, we're going to be doing this in a minute again, so once we cut both our, our halves. Okay. And let me pick this one up. Actually, let me cut it out. Let me see if I can even pick it up. I, like I said, I do believe I'm going to let everything rest for a little bit before I cut both halves of my pendants. And we'll burnish it off more after to get rid of our seams all the way once we put the two halves together. 
And then all these scraps I'm gonna play with too. I'll probably lentil them up because I have this green scrap here with the black. And I also have these black ones as well. So I think I'll probably swirl it up and bake it off as a bead. See what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna let everything rest and then when that's done resting, I'll come back and we'll cut our two halves and put it together and see what it looks like. You choking over there? Okay, let's try to finish these off. So I have my two parts here and I took out some baking powders all I have but you can use cornstarch as well because I'm going to lay these two on top of each other and I don't want them to stick and in the summertime I'm having more trouble with things sticking to each other so I'm hoping if I lay on a little bit of I'm trying to see what one's stickier this white is not too sticky but then if the white sticks to it I'm screwed like if something sticks to the white the black is fresh. Well, so I'm going to brush on a little bit of baking powder, cornstarch, just to kind of act as a buffer. Cornstarch would be better because it's less uh, granular. I even like some. Oh, I don't know how baby powder would work, actually. Scratch that. I don't know if it's polymer clay compatible or not. Okay, so then I'm going to decide where I'm going to cut this right now. What I realized is these little slices, I was cutting the scrap end on this one too. On the little flower, it's the not so good end. <laughs> oh well. It's what it is, right? So pretty much we're going to lay it down and quickly cut and then remove it. Chip. As fast as we can. Two. And we'll set these together. Hopefully they're the right thickness. The flower one's a little bit thicker, but not too bad when we burnish it down. Oh, it is S-U-P-P-E-R time. Ah, someone just got whiny and there's a reason for it. Then we'll burnish these together a little bit, and then we're going to put them on our backing. We're just going to get them to kind of stuck together. It's hard to burnish with a glove on. i got to go feed the dogs. But I want to get them laid on my backing. So this is the backing, and it's on a setting three, because right now those are fairly thick enough. Um... So I'm going to lay it on my backing, and I put it on a three just to see if I even have enough to do both of them. Yes, Jax, I hear you. Um, where's my little roller? Right here. I have all kinds of stuff on my desk right now because I'm painting this bureau, so I got chalk paint all over, and I have all kinds of stuff right now. I'm going to lay this on my backing. And again, don't worry about your shape as much because we're going to burnish this really well now. And then we'll recut our shape. I'm also going to get as much of this off as I can because I want to lay that one on it if I have enough. And I did make a second one for that purple as well. I think I might have enough of this to do one more to lay on this other one if I cut the rest of this yellow up. 
but you can lay it on whatever you want. I'm just using these canes up because they're getting old and crackly. That should be enough. And then with that thickness and that thickness, it should be thick enough. So I'm going to run this through on a four as well and lay that one on. And now we just got to burnish the crap out of them pretty much to get everything nice and smooth, to get it stretched out a little bit so that way we can put our, or we can cut them out and get our shapes good. And again, if your seams never look pretty, you can always use a cane to put over your seam. If you're never happy with your seams, you can always use um, that nail tape we just used not that long ago. There's all kinds of things you can do to cover a seam. But if you burnish with your seam first and then go out from there, usually they go pretty well. But really you just want to get everything really stuck down to your base clay and everything really smooth. And I want to move this away from the edge. And so now it's just about burnishing pretty much. Big enough so where you can recut out your shape. Which it usually doesn't need much. But I really want to make sure this black is... All the seams are gone. But because we have a half and half pendant, you won't have the seams from the square. This other one I did, I cut the black, like I said we should have, instead of having like an oval rectangle to put together, I cut the ends flat first, and then I put it together. stuck on there. I'm going to do the same thing with that purpley one. Now we'll recut out these shapes, and these guys should be good for the oven. And we'll see how they look. metal cutters get such a nice clean edge but you always have this seam right here where the cutter is you know where they join the cutter right here it's the only thing that sucks about metal cutters but they get such a beautiful clean edge these ones in the open. The other ones I'm going to do in a second, but the same way just with this purple. 
Cause you hear my, can you hear him? Oh, I'm starving. Even though I had some french fries earlier. See, that should be plenty thick enough for the base. Okay, I'm gonna get these in the oven. We'll see how these look. Uh, baking them for a full 60 minutes, 275 degrees, because pretty much all of this is primo. Except for the Cernet translucent, but oh well, 275. With a piece, I just lay a piece of parchment over it like that. So here are my purple ones. And I'm also going to make some cute little earrings. So just with the scraps, um, all I did was put these in a ball, scraps. Either, well, for the last one, I already had bad slices, but for this one, I don't. So I'm going to cut just some slices off. Wrap it around. That one's really, really thick. save that one actually. That one's still really thick. Now remember, I already had scraps, so this is now... I'm just showing you what I just did fast. I didn't swirl it or anything. And then I flattened it out. And then it is going to get kind of thin, so I'll show you what I will do. Either you can leave it the way it is, or I rolled it through on setting zero. And you can leave it like that. Let me roll this out. setting because that's what I just did with this and I actually liked the way it looked so I'm going to put I already put that through on zero and then with laying this on here I'm going to lay a couple of not so good slices, which again is what I already had scraps of. Let me do this end of the cane. And then we're going to put it back through on zero and stretch it out a little bit more. So then some of the pieces will be even more stretched and some you'll have some green. So on this one, let's see, I don't have many earring size cutters. I really need to get some more because I can't wear earrings at work really, especially right now with COVID and my helmet that I have to wear that I showed you guys on my Facebook page. And I have to wear this helmet every day. Okay. Remember, this is translucent clay, so when it bakes, it's going to change. So I'm going to get everything baked, and I will be back. And there they are. They're still a little warm. I mean, everything's cool enough that I could touch it, but they're all still a little warm. So this is the purple back one. And I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. That is definitely purpley in those circles. But I'm going to sand down too. That will help get some more shine through. So we have two purples. Look. Like I was saying, this is the s distorted end. I didn't even realize until I was cutting the other end. So I was like, oops, I got a distorted end on there. And then my two little earrings. 
I got these ones and then these ones but when you hold them up to the light or like if they're dangling in your ear they definitely will be looking different than you know obviously having them down like this because the light will be able to pass through them I don't know if I'm gonna hang these this way and I do have some smaller color cutters I said I didn't but I always forget about these this set that was gifted to me this has different I mean they're not like the most beautiful shapes but they would work for earrings like they totally would because most of the pendant size I order I order for pendant sizes and then randomly when I have enough I make earrings but I don't always have enough so or I don't always want to make earrings just because, especially, like I said, right now, I'm not really wearing them, so. But I have these. I should really order some different sizes of things. Okay, so I'm going to get these sanded. I'm going to sand 400, 600, 800, um, and 1,000, maybe to 1,500. Um, you guys have seen me sand many times, so I'm not going to show you. I'm. You can either do it by hand or I'm going to use my uh, skill sander. Some people use their Dremel. You do want to moisten it a little bit at least, if not in the sink, if you're doing it by hand. Um, I'll just do it right here with it just damp to keep the dust down. And other than that, I will be back when those are sanded. I really like them. So they're all now sanded. And I just need to buff them up and then go wash them upstairs. But I sanded up from 400 to 1500. And I think they're going to look really nice when they're done. So I'm going to buff with my orange and white wheels and trim the edges as well with my orange wheel. Again, I've showed you it recently in a video. Um, and then I will resin. I don't know if I'm going to resin the earrings or not. I don't tend to spray perfume on my head, so um, but hairspray would affect the finish of it. So I don't know. I may just um, leave them as they are. I guess I'll have to decide that soon enough. So I have them all trimmed, sanded, and buffed. There are some still little white dots down in those little micro bubbles. I can't get it out. I just soaked them in water to see if I could get them out. And I can't get them out. So they are what they are. I guess I'll pick the best one because I don't need to wear two. I'll pick the best one. Actually, I think I like this one the best. Can you see that this is a green and this is a purple? It just tints it a little bit. That's all the placking. Or the micro, not micro, those are big air bubbles in the backs. Oh, where am I missing? I'm missing the green ones. Where the hell did those just go? I must have dropped them on my way downstairs. But either way, all I have to do is resin them now and then they are completely done. So pretty much other than drilling holes, they are done. And I know the camera isn't picking it up very well, but in real life, the black looks better than that. Um, oh, there you go. That's how it looks in real life. Like you could actually see. I don't know why it's reflecting so well, which isn't a bad thing. It's just the camera's not picking it up as well. kind of weird. There we go. Kind of. Maybe I need to brighten it. There we go. Ah, ta-da. Okay, so there's the purple one with the purple back. And they're resined. Oh. 
And then here is the one with the green back. Here. And then my two little earring sets. So all now I have to do is pretty much just drill holes and put whatever finishing I want to do, whether it's a bale or a jump ring or whatever um, on them. So I know they look really black when I darken it, but they're really not. They're really not at all. They look really cool, actually. So that's pretty much finished. Um, and oh, so you remember how I had all those dots? I don't know where I put them. Um, from the sanding marks. Wait, let me grab one. Remember all those little white dots in there from, sorry, I had to take my nail polish off because I have surgery on um, Thursday and I didn't realize, I totally forgot that they're going to have to put the pulse oximeter on me, so I had to take my nail polish off, but on one finger. But remember those little dots from the micro holes down in there? Look, the resin actually, that's a piece of dust on it. I think that's the only spot where they still showed up, was a little bit right there. The rest it faded out. And same with this one. There's no white dots down in there. I wish it would show up well. Maybe when I edit it, I can lighten it. But either way, I really like them. I'm happy with them. It's crazy when I look on camera, this looks really black. And then when I look off camera, it looks really purple with the circles. I could see all of it.